Namo Buddhai, welcome. Uh, today I am going to share my learnings from the Middle Discourses 41. Uh, this discourse basically is about why the reason why uh, some beings, some sentient beings get born in uh, hell realms, lower realms and some beings get born in higher realms. So basically what happened was that the link to the detailed discourse is given in the description you can check the detailed sutta uh, so so at one time buddha was wandering in the land of kosalas and uh, together with a large sangha of mendicants and at that time the brahmins and householders came to know that buddha is there so they came to visit the buddha and they they asked buddha that uh, master gautama what is the reason why some sentient beings when their body breaks up after death death are reborn in a place of loss a bad place the underworld, hell. And what is the cause, Master Gautama? What is the reason why some sentient beings, when their body breaks up after death, are reborn in a good place, a heavenly realm, right? So they wanted to know why some beings are born in bad places, lower realms, right? So there are like 31 planes of existence, right? So there are the lower realms, the hell realms, the animal realms, and the, the, the uh, realm of the hungry, hungry ghosts. And then there is the human realm. And then there are the uh, above that there is the realms of the gods the devas right so what makes determines uh, uh, after the death of a person uh, what realm he gets born into so here listen to what buddha said buddha said unprincipled and immoral conduct is the reason why some sentient beings whether their body breaks up after when their body breaks up after death are reborn in the places of loss bad place etc principled and moral conduct is the reason why some sentient beings when their body breaks up, are reborn in a good place. So that is like the clear and the perfect kind of answer that Buddha gave, the conduct, whether it's a con principle or a good conduct or a bad conduct. So that's why if you see the Buddha's teaching is totally concentrated on the conduct. If you see the Noble Eightfold Path, we talk about right speech, right action, right livelihood. So Buddha st stated a lot of importance on your conduct because you try to do a lot of things. I, there is a separate video I have made, a separate sutta where I have uh, covered where uh, that Buddha said that no amount of prayer or worship will, will be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of rectify the person's wrong deeds, right? The rebirth happens as per the person's karma, right? In Hindi, the word is gati, right? The person gets born as per, the person gets the gati as per his karmas in this life. So what we have to do is we have to be very careful of our karmas, right? So now Buddha says, uh, so so they said, Brahmins and householders said, so we don't understand the detailed meaning of Master Gautama's brief statement. Please elaborate. So Buddha said, okay, householders, listen and apply your mind. I will speak. Say this. They said, yes, sir. And Buddha said, householders, unprincipled and immoral conduct is threefold. How? There are three ways in which you can do immoral conduct. One is by way of three, threefold is by way of body, fourfold is by way of speech and threefold by way of mind. See, what can happen is you can either think bad thoughts or you can speak bad words or do some wrong bad actions from your body, right? These are the mo three ways. So in, in that, Buddha says three, three ways by body, four ways by speech and three ways by mind. So let us understand what, what Buddha says in terms of the wrong actions. So first is the threefold bad actions by way of body. What are the threefold bad actions? One is killing living creatures, right? They are violent, bloody handed, hardened killer, merciless to living beings, right? That's the first. Second is they steal with the intention to commit theft. They take the wealth. So the intention is very important, right? They take the wealth or belongings of others. Third, they commit sexual misconduct. Now, what is sexual misconduct? See, this is actually the sutta which defines all these terms. So, this is a very, very important sutta. So, Buddha says, they have sexual relations with women who have their mother, father, mother, father, brother, sister, relatives or clan as guardian. Any woman who has some, who is under protection, right, who has some guardian. So, they have sexual relations with them. Second, they have sexual relations who, his, who, is protected on principle. Protected on principle is mostly referring to the bhikkhunis, the nuns, right? Who who cannot indulge in a sexual act, right? So they, they or third is who has a husband. That means entering into a sexual intercourse uh, or sexual uh, uh, union with a with a woman who already has a husband, 
or whose violation is punishable by law. So Buddha placed a lot of importance on the law of the land. So any violation of a law there if you do or one who has been garlanded as a token of betrothal. That is, I was not very clear on that. Uh, uh, so that is one more thing that Buddha said, garlanded as a token of betrothal. This is how unprincipled and immoral conduct is threefold by way of body. Then what is the fourth, fourfold uh, 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 conduct, unprincipled conduct by way of speech, right? Speech, what Buddha said is, first is lying. That means if you, so if they are summoned somewhere, like in a council or a family meeting, and not knowing they say I know, knowing they say I don't know, not saying, not seeing they say I see, seeing they say I don't see. That means knowing something X, they say Y, right? Uh, or not knowing X, they say X, right? That means you are saying something which is contrary to what you know or you either don't know and you then say I know. So that is the difference. They they deliberately lie for the sake of themselves or another. So deliberate. It should be deliberate. Right? For the sake of themselves or another. That means it may be sake for yourself or it may be for any other person also. Or from trivial worldly reason. From some trivial, trivial reason they lie. Right? Then they speak divisively. Right? That is the second. First is the lie. Second is di divisively. That means they repeat in one place what they heard in another so as to divide people against each other. Right? And so... They divide those who are harmonious, supporting division, delighting in division, loving division, speaking words that pro, div, dividing communities and enjoying, you know, that getting pleasure from dividing people and communities. This is even more, you know, uh, negative karma gets created. Then they speak harshly. They use the kind of words that are cruel, nasty, hurtful, offensive, bordering on anger, not leading to immersion. Right? So harsh, angry words, or abusive words. Fourth is they talk nonsense. Right? Their speech, their speech is untimely. It's neither factual nor beneficial to anyone. It has nothing to do with the teaching or the training. Their words have no value and are untimely, unreasonable, rambling, and pointless. So it's like basically the idle gossip. What people, even all of us, we do a lot of times in a day, right? Doing idle gossip. So that is also prohibited, right? This is how un unprincipled and immoral conduct is fourfold. Then what are the unprincipled and immoral conduct threefold by way of mind? So Buddha says when a certain person is covetous. Covetous means they covet. That means they want the wealth or belongings of others. Only if their belongings become mine. Right? That intention they have in the mind. Second, they have wrong views. Right? Wrong views means their perspectives are wrong. That means they do not uh, give any meaning to uh, giving they do not give value to giving charity, sacrifice, offerings. They think that there is no, no fruit in whether I do good deeds or bad deeds. It's the same. They do not believe in afterlife. There is no such thing as mother or father or beings that reborn some spontaneously. There is no ascetic or Brahman who has rightly practiced and who describes the afterlife after realizing. That means who is awakened and who 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 describes it with their own insight. So they don't believe in that. They are unprincipled. So this is the wrong view. Right? So first is covetousness. Second is ill will and malicious intentions. May these sentient beings be killed, slaughtered. So this is like what we, you know, our thoughts that may, you know, this person be harmed. May, may you know, if we are jealous about some person, may this person have lost. All these thoughts, that also is the negative conduct. It comes in the unprincipled conduct. Third is having a wrong view. So this is how. So there are three fold uh, reasons of body. Killing living creatures, stealing, sexual misconduct. Four by way of speech, lying, de 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 speaking divisively, speaking harshly, speaking nonsense and by the mind. That is covetousness, ill will, malicious intention and wrong view. Then Buddha came that uh, what are the then how is the principled and moral? Now Buddha talked about the moral and principle good conduct. So Buddha says, it's when a certain person gives up killing living creatures. So an important thing to understand is, Buddha is saying is giving up. So even if you have killed living creatures in the past, in this life, if you stop it and give up, that is also very good. Then you are on the path of the Dhamma, right? So giving up killing, they renounce the rod and the sword. 
they are scrupulous and kind living a life full of compassion right so that is the first they give up stealing they don't with the intention to commit theft take the wealth of others so they give up stealing they give up sexual misconduct they do not have sexual relations with women under protection or sexual relations with women who is protected on principle or who has a husband or whose violation is punishable by law or even one who has been garlanded as a token of betrothal right they have given up lying right so they if they don't know anything they say i don't know if they know anything they say i know not seeing they say i don't see seeing they say i i see so they don't deliberately lie for the sake of themselves or another right they give divisive speech right they do not divide instead with this is they reconcile those who are divided supporting unity delighting in harmony loving in harmony so they start delighting in harmony rather than dividing people then they give up harsh speech they speak in ways that's mellow pleasing to the ear lovely going to the heart polite likable and agreeable to the people that means more of kind speech so friends that is what we have to do uh, if like for example harsh speech is one of the my concern areas my problem areas identify your problem area and do what the buddha wants us to do more mellow more pleasing speech we have to cultivate right they give up talking nonsense their words so again it's all you see the words are give up give up so it's not that we should be born into something like a you know we are all work in progress so buddha recognizes this and says give up give up that give up is what we have to do in this life right now that we are in the on the path of the dharma so 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 harsh speech we have discussed then give up talking nonsense their words are timely true and meaningful in line with the teaching and the training they say things at the right time which are valuable reasonable succinct and beneficial this is how principled and moral conduct is fourfold then how is principle and moral conduct threefold by way of mind it's when a certain person is not covetous they do not covet the wealth or, or and do not think that oh their belonging should be mine they should not do not think like that they have a kind heart and loving intentions may these sentient beings live free of enmity and ill so this is what is the meta prayer right may all be happy may all be at peace that kind of a uh, intention we can cultivate every day whether we are you know having some free time we can just cultivate that loving intention and spread towards everyone may all beings be happy may all beings be at peace right so that we can cultivate third they have right view they they give meaning and to sacrifice giving and offerings they know that good deeds result in good outcomes bad deeds result in bad outcomes there is an afterlife there are such things as mother father beings that are born spontaneously there are ascetics and brahmans who have who are rightly comported and who have rightly practiced and who describe the afterlife after realizing it with their insight right so that is how they do so as a person of principle and moral conduct might wish if only my body breaks up i would be born in the company of well to do brahmans well to do householders if if only so and they get born in those realms and they person of principle and moral conduct might wish if only i might realize the undefiled freedom of heart and freedom of wisdom and live after realizing it with my own insight to do and and it may be possible right because they have principle and moral conduct so what buddha is trying to say is that you can even become an arhant a person who is free from all defilements if you have unprincipled and moral conduct in this lifetime and you desire to be an arhant you even can be an arhant right so it's just that you have to have the main important thing is the conduct so it is said that after buddha spoke the brahmins and householders were very happy and it is like it, it, as if he was writing the overturned or revealing the hidden or pointing out the path to the lost or lighting a lamp in the dark so the people with clear eyes can see what's there master gautama has made the teaching clear in many ways we go for refuge to master gautama to the teaching and to the mendicant sangha from this day forth may master gautama remember us as a lay follower who have gone for refuge for life right so this was the uh, this was the uh, middle discourses 41 i hope this was useful the important thing having the right conduct giving up wrong conduct taking the right path taking the path of the dhamma and moving towards the path and uh, accordingly it's decided how what realm we born into
right so uh, uh, thank you so much do share your thoughts and reflections on this sutta in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo